Hey, what's happening? It's Tim from E-Mini Mind. In this video, we're going to run through today's ES Trades. Uh, it's uh, Thursday, May the 4th, and may the 4th be with you. We kind of have a janky 50% retracement long here. The first one on the daily chart from Lowe's looked like this. We came up, didn't make it to the negative 61.8, but we did get a bounce here on the 26th. And so after that bounce, I drew up this retracement. Uh, just as kind of a reference point, and you can see we're coming back down to that same level again. Really, um, the full 50% retracement would look like this, but since we have the 50 short uh, above us and the 50 long below us, there really shouldn't be too much happening in the middle of the range, or that'd be kind of a danger zone. So at this point, we're just, uh, we had the inverted hammer up here on uh, the first, and then that kind of was a double top. So I bought some puts on the close that day. I'm going to close them out uh, today. Maybe keep one. I've got uh, Friday expiration and uh, Monday expiration. So I'll probably close most of them and then maybe keep one or two to see what happens tomorrow of the Monday expirations. But um, that whole most of that position will be closed here um, in the next hour or so as we get into the close today. Uh, so let's go to the intraday chart. A couple of important nuggets I wanted to pass on to you today. Um, let's see, I'm just going to get rid of all my drawings and we'll redraw. So I'll first start by marking the 30 minute <clears throat> high and low. We did have a 15 minute um, opening range breakout today and you'll notice this first 15 minute candle is larger than 20 points. So when that happens, I just take the range of the candle, so 22 and a quarter and uh, divide it by two. So basically like, um, you know, 11, uh, 50 <clears throat> and make that the stop. And so that ended up being a stop out today because we came uh, down about 12 ish points and then we rallied up kind of into this mid zone and that's where I got taken out. We made another move down kind of this double bottom and then moved up again. So nothing uh, on the 15 minute breakout today. And I wanted to go back to Tuesday. In the live trading session on Tuesday, I mentioned that when you get your 20-point target hit, Tuesday was a really quick 15-minute breakout for, for plus 20, uh, 20 points. And when you get that quick plus 20, or any time you get a plus 20 hit, if you do have a couple of contracts and you're looking for a way to trail, I would wait till you get your plus 20 hit, and let's say you have uh, two contracts, just you know, the smallest number of multiples. Um, that second contract, if you do want to trail it, then you can start trailing 15-minute bars after you get the plus 20 hit. The key there is to not trail at all until you get your first plus 20. Then that second one, you can trail on the way down above each 15 minute candle if you're in a downtrend and you're short and uh, that one you know that could get you like another 20 points so you could get plus 20 on the first contract and then like plus 40 points on the second contract um, it doesn't happen all the time but on these days where we get these pretty big sell-offs you know plus 20 and then we keep going that's a good way to capitalize and have a really really big R multiple as opposed to you know, micromanaging it and taking the position off early, maybe you get four points or five points. Well, on the 15-minute opening range breakout, the whole point is to get big returns, big profits out of it, because you're only taking it, you know, five times a week, maybe a few extra if you take the opposite direction if you get stopped out the first time. So um, that's the 15 minute. Um, that's been doing really well lately. Wanted to go down to some retracements, and we'll talk about the one minute. So uh, kind of the first or the big halfway back today came kind of early. It was just from highs of the morning to lows of the morning. And if we go to the 512 tick chart, we can come in here and zoom in a little bit. We can see we had a couple of swing lows here. And you'll notice this low broke this prior swing low by a couple of ticks. It broke the 61.8. So this was the first short on the, uh, the retracements and it was a 40.84.75, traded in a little bit to the 61.8 of this micro, but that just happened to be the full halfway back of the larger retracement here. So no big deal there. Um, that rolled over, was able to trail the next retracement like that, and then the next retracement like that. And then when we broke swing lows again, we were actually at the opposing long, 
And when that happens, I like to kind of get aggressive with my stop. So I ended up drawing the next retracement even before we hit the target of this prior retracement because we were at the opposing long here. <clears throat> so I didn't wait till we hit this negative 23. I just came in as soon as we broke the swing low and trailed the next 61.8. And that was a um, 81.50. And so 40, 81, 50 is where I got out of that. Then we kind of bounced around along this 50% before making our way lower. And um, as we did that, you know, then the 30-minute the high and low was established. We were through the first 30 minutes about this point and then came down to the negative 23 exactly. The next 50% retracement really didn't give... Uh, much of an entry because there was no real swing low break here. Uh, this bounce was right at the 50% uh, long. But um, then when we came down again, we broke the negative 23 by a little bit here. And you could draw up a retracement like this. Um, it kind of lined up with the bottom of the 30 minute range and this swing low and the distance between the 50 here and the 61.8 was within two points. It's kind of a bigger drawing. Um, I would consider that more of a halfway back versus a micro halfway back, but it doesn't mean you can't take those. It kind of came up really close. Um, I'm using this anchor point up here. If you used the lower high, they're, they're pretty close, but that would at least give you a fill on this first touch versus the second touch. And that rolled over. It did go to the negative 23, um, so it was a nice move. Uh, you'll notice down here that at 723, we did have a low, nicey tick. But one thing I wanted to point out is that when you get a low tick that lines up with low price, so earlier in the day, um, we had a low tick uh, back here that lined up with low price and then we ended up going lower so we had a tick divergence meaning nicey tick low and the low price of the day lined up and then 30 seconds later we made a new low price that's a tick divergence it means we can keep making new lows and so you don't want to be when you get a tick divergence like that you don't want to be continually trying to buy lows and pick a bottom. And so and we mentioned this a little bit on Tuesday in the live session that following low ticks, like future low nicey ticks that line up with low price are more likely to then roll over and make new lows. So even though this one here had a low, t uh, this one here, this retracement had a low tick at 23, it was very likely to roll over because we had seen all of the prior low ticks at lows then follow up by breaking their lows. So just a pattern to watch out for. And then the other pattern, this is going to be applied more to the one minute. Um, I have a one period moving average on the nicey tick chart. You don't need that. Um, I put it on there years ago and and have just left it on there, uh, really for no other reason. Um, but when, if we, so if we flip to the one minute chart, there was a uh, little hammer here. It wasn't the low of the day. But what I wanted to point out is that you see how you have the start of an uptrend here where we're rising. This is a, now a higher low. Well, if we come back to the nicey tick, we had a low tick at 44. That was back here. It wasn't the low, um, lowest tick of the day. But then this pullback at 52 that lined up with this 52 hammer, see how its nicey tick is a higher low so that the uptrend is sort of starting in the nicey ticks as well. And the uptrend is starting here. So our low at 44 was not the low tick of the day. But our 50, this is pretty early in the day, so it may seem a little bit counterintuitive to um, look at the nicey tick and say, well, you know, we're only 15 minutes in the day. How is, it, it's probably not going to be the lowest tick 
in the first 15 minutes. Like as the market gets going on the day, you're likely going to expand that range of nicey ticks. So at that time, the low tick was a minus 1,000. Um, and the high ticks at that point were only minus 285. So very likely we're going to expand that range. A minus 1,000 is a pretty big low tick, um, but it's early in the day. Same thing goes for like, yeah, we had a strong move down in the first 15 minutes, but we're so early in the day that we're likely to expand that range. You know, we got the entire day ahead of us, first 15 minutes, probably not going to be the entire range for the day. But this pattern where you have a higher low nicey tick and a higher low put in on the one minute chart can be bought above the candles high on the one minute chart. So it's like a higher low is put in and a higher low is put in on the nicey tick. So if you look for trends to form, like this uptrend starting to form in the nicey tick, that corresponds with an uptrend forming higher low nicey tick, higher low candle. Um, that is okay to take that as a long if you want to be a little more aggressive and not just take hammers at highs and lows and the halfway backs. That would kind of be an additional place to look for um, opportunities. Now, if we go fast forward a little bit more to this cluster here, we did have a couple hammers and um, it is at a 50%, but keep in mind the short traded first and this little halfway back short, you know, I was in that move to the downside. So coming down to this 50%, um, the retracement short was kind of ending right at about the same time that this hammer was setting up. But anytime you have two 50%, the one that traded first is going to be the one that has a little bit more weight. So the short traded first, then we came down to this long. And so anything in the middle of the range, I mean, you hear me say this all the time, middle of the range is going to be the danger zone. And you can see we kind of traded sideways for a while, and there really wasn't anything uh, useful in that range. So you can just put a rectangle around it like this, wait for the 618 to break of either the, the long or the short, and then whichever one breaks, you know, obviously, then you know that's the direction that the market has strength for. So then we can come in and draw the next retracement after that first one completes to the negative 23. So nicey tick is really, really helpful um, looking for extreme correlations between extreme low ticks lining up with low price or high ticks lining up with high price. In a day where we're in a downtrend, you can look for um, lower highs and lower lows on the nicey tick itself, so the actual patterns. Um, and you can just look for you know extreme high ticks to sort of correspond with the price in a way where if we have a high tick, we want to be shorting, and if we have a low tick, we want to be lo going long. And so even if it's not the high or low of the day, it's nice to get a low-ish tick to go long, just like this little hammer here. It's relatively low based on the preceding ticks. And if you're going short, you want you know a relatively high tick to correspond with that, that short entry. So um, that's all I got for you today, a couple of nuggets. Um, as always, Tuesdays are the days that we do the live trading session. And I did just post um, a little bit earlier today um, some screenshots from the morning's trades in the uh, the dashboard. So if you're part of the uh, the VIP membership, the, the, the Discord is kind of a new addition this last year. And uh, it's a nice place to be able to chat throughout the rest of the week in addition to the Tuesday live session. So if you have questions, uh, you can drop them in the comments below. Hope you have a great week. And if you like these videos, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Thanks and take care.